Friday morning with testimony. You know, Friday testimonies are usually tied up for the salvation of your soul. And one that was like, now I see. How many seconds is that one? Praise God. Good morning, church. Um, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul and that of my family. It so happened that on Monday, while I was in the office, I just discovered that um, there was no more WhatsApp on my phone. And I was like, very, you know, anxious and all, because we know that WhatsApp is very common in this part for instant messaging. So after about two hours, I was thinking, what will I do? This is January. January has 93 days. So you have to be very careful and very prudent in your spending. So somebody just told me that I should, you know, get in touch with one of my friends. So I just sent him a, a message on BBM that if he has a used phone that is not Blackberry that I can use, that he should just let me have it, that I'm just, you know, destabilized as it is because I have some jobs to deliver via WhatsApp. So, like, a second later, I just replied and said, go and find out the price of a reasonable phone and send me your account number. And that was how I got, in fact, got some prop surprise. I, I didn't expect that that was going to happen. And secondly, I I was ill over the weekend, I'm very, and God has healed me. I bless you. Glory to God. Praise Jesus. I want to thank God for the salvation of our soul. And I just want to thank God how we started the year. Last week, where I was very healed on Thursday and Friday. By this time last week, I was very healed. And I give God the glory because it didn't continue. I went to Korodu on Saturday. And, and I don't know, I didn't use drugs. I didn't take any medicine. And everything just went. I wonder why. I wonder how. But I knew it was God. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord, Church. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul and that of my family members. I want to thank God on behalf of my elder brother for God keeping him alive even up to today. Last year, last month, he was about to come back for vacation with his family. Two days before his return, this dream came that something happened to him. And I told my sister as we prayed, I was coming to this altar to pray every day for him. On 31st, last year of last year, he had an accident with his family, his wife, his two children. As God will have it, that day I was doing ushering work. I was standing at the back, quarter to twelve. My sister called me, no, they can't see your brother. I went, I stepped out, and I knelt down and prayed, say, God of a day boy, please, my dad is alive. Don't let anything happen to me. As God will have it, after some time, I called, but they said they've seen him. This is a journey that, could, that was supposed to take them 10 minutes. And for five hours, they were looking for them, not knowing that they had accident. Thank God nothing happened to them, even though the car was written off. Or I want to bless the name of God, because last, this week Monday, they returned to their place. Glory to God, glory to God. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for the salvation of my soul, and I want to thank you for saving my life and the life of my family last week, Friday, week today. Um, my folks were coming in from out of town and was supposed to go and pick them in the airport, so I forgot the time and I was there. The next day they woke me up and um, already on the airport. So I had to call the driver and I told him that you have to speed. So he was speeding, he was flying to the airport. And when we got to the airport, we picked them back. When he now turned back, we were not going. Now, you know, he, and he now turned back, we like, um, but that the brake has failed. And we were now managing the car. I was like, don't tell my, my you know, my folks because you agitate them. So we now drove three trailers. We were just driving and we came back. I just want to thank God because we were flying at 160 to the airport and it didn't break. I don't know what would happen if you broke on the way to the airport. I want to thank God for saving me. You know you are going to the airport. You started flying. You are flying. You are not driving again. Who do you have this? Oh my God. Wow. Let's just put our to this one that all the testimony that they have just um, shared, they are permanent. They will not come back. It is not normally will backfire. They will not turn to prayer request again. And we that have heard them, the Almighty God will settle everything that we need unto God's testimonies too. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Today is Friday. Every Friday in early February is the Holy Ghost session. Holy Ghost session where we would spend time to pray in the spirit. Very, very important. 
It is a dangerous thing for somebody to live in this world and not be equipped properly with the Holy Ghost. The devil has bound many people's hearts not to believe that. But that is part of his scheme anyway. God is like the liar and is the father of lies. So you don't need this, all these things that they are saying. You don't need it. We are going to be talking about peace in pandemonium. Peace in pandemonium. Pandemonium is a state of confusion or disorder. Not just physically, it could be emotionally, it could be mentally. But how do you achieve peace in pandemonium? We live in the world of confusion, the world of pandemonium. Many nations, governments in the nation, they are having a showdown with the citizens. And the workers of the nation, they are constantly, there's constantly strike somewhere. There's constantly uh, protest somewhere in the world. Because the world is in pandemonium. How do you live in such a world without having peace? Very important. We live in a world that some cabals in the government, so all over the world, they determine the prices of some essential product regardless of the forces of demand and supply. We live in the world that some people stay in some places and they erupt problems. We live in the world that craze and fashion, they are children of the same mother, called indecency. We live in the world that so many things, even LSC is being broadcast everywhere, and even the very elect, they are considering queuing behind LSC. <laughs> we live in the world that, is, is it, this, should I believe this one, of confusion? How do you achieve peace in confusion? We were talking to the people in the mentorship class two days ago that peace is very essential for progress. In the absence of peace, progress is usually hard. And regardless of what may be happening, you can still achieve your peace to make progress. And one equipment that God has given spiritually to believer is the Holy Spirit. You can go into any chaotic situation or chaotic environment if you are well dressed for it. If you are not well dressed to go into a house that has been engulfed with fire and you want to go and rescue the victim there, you will not become a victim. But the ones that are equipped for it, the firefighters, the things they wear, they have been equipped because those things are fire resisting gadgets. And they have their hose with water. And they, that they are equipped to go and fight the fire and rescue. So it is very easy for somebody to go into a problematic environment if you have been dressed for it. The only spirit is the dressing that we have for chaotic situations. The Bible has already told us, Jesus was telling the disciples that in this world there will be tribulation, John chapter 16, 33. John 16, 33. He did not deceive us. He said that there will be chaos, there will be tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. He also said in the book of John chapter 14, 17 and 18. John chapter 14, 17 and 18. He said that the Holy Spirit he has given to us is with us and is in us. Very important. In John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, 27. He said that he will not leave us comfortless. But the Holy Spirit he will give to us. What does that mean? That means that in this world there will be so many things that will be removing comfort. That will be removing peace. But the Holy Spirit is the one that will stabilize the situation. Peace, I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Say that peace I give. When did he give the peace? The peace has been given in the Holy Ghost. But just as I was telling us last week, that you can have a cup of coffee with 
10 cubes of sugar inside and it will still not be sweet. Because the sugar will just go down and settle until you stir it up. Pray in the Holy Ghost, stir up or activate all the Holy Spirit can deliver unto you. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, said that be anxious for many things we want us, we, we drive us into anxiety in this world. But said that be anxious for nothing, but in not too long, how that can be possible? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God. Which passed all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind to Christ. The peace that you want me, I'm in a serious trouble. I need so many things. I'm not getting it. I'm being delayed. How come I'm having this peace? <clears throat> it's the Holy Spirit that can that can activate that peace in you. He said that when you pray, that the peace that passes, passing on understanding, people will be wondering that. How come this person is not even fidgeting? How come this man is not shaking? He said that that is what they call the peace of God. You see yourself, you'll be wondering, with this long, long time that I've been, how come I'm not just going a wire? It's because of the peace of God. But sometimes the peace could be in a person and it could not be activated if you don't pray in the Holy Ghost. He said when you pray, then the peace that passes all understanding will be activated. Peace in pandemonium. You may be saying that I am praying in understanding. No! In addition to praying in understanding, you pray in the Spirit. He said it. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, before we rise to pray. Ephesians He said that, Pray all kind of prayer in the spirit. The same person that said that the peace of God will pass up with the passage of God, he now told us, praying always with all prayer and supplication. You can see that he now put the final answer to what he was saying in that particular place. With supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all state. Pray always with all prayer and supplication. Where? In the spirit. And right now we want to activate this peace of God in us. Because by the time you have peace, you just see the solution to the situation, the idea will come to you. When other people are forgetting, you are calm. And there's a state of peace that you can achieve that things will just be happening for you. Let's try to have peace and just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Peace in pandemonium, peace in pandemonium. Open your mouth and say, Father, Father. as I open my mouth now, grant unto me divine offerings, unto staying of the Holy Spirit in me, in the name of Jesus. Mashanta